Dat is daar. Good evening. Bona nit. Rosso Irtiwidi at home. Welcome to this event. Rana Trefnui, can you share Catalonia ne A and Ek and Loiker? A can you wear don? A can a Ralvan? To in Mindy, Dwight, a headache area, symbol life and camaraic here. It can a shake back and right, a key rise in Shara camaraic. I can view me and run a rise, real big. On behalf of the organizers, uh, the Catalan Assembly in England, the Catalan Assembly in Ireland, and the Catalan uh, Assembly in Scotland, I will say a few symbolic words in Welsh for the Welsh audience and for those who speak Welsh and live in other parts like me. Gadewhimi Gevlui Nor Panelith, the Mindy Technically Novahin, Regochu Olaithola Oran Guladapas, Wedin Sean Jobins Oran Yes Cambri. Laura Alba or Ran Ayanek Aralvan, Enric Stern or Ran Ayanek and Schleger. Tioch Ran Trefnir, do we get home and Cassetti and Iheno? Nido is Angen Kelunyes are Sean Jones, Cadeli them and Gir, yes, Cambri, are Kever, Simbu and Hambri, of course. On Vesli, do you mean Detroit at Sistek, you Cavlino? Let me introduce the panel. Um, uh, me, myself, Begochu uh, Olaithola from uh, the Catalan Assembly in the Basque Country. Then uh, Enrique Stern in the Catalan Assembly in England. Uh, Laura Alba, the Catalan Assembly in uh, Scotland. And of course, uh, our main uh, person, the chair, uh, the chair of the campaign of the US Cambry, uh, Sean Jobbins. And thank you on behalf of the organizers of this event for connecting with us tonight. Sean Jobin's uh, campaign chair needs no presentation for those who live in Wales, but for those who meet him today for the first time, I'll say he's a full-time activist of the Welsh language and for a Welsh Republic. He has, uh, among other things, he has published many books on the issue of independence. Uh, for example, uh, the phenomenon of well of Welsh, Welshness, or uh, is Wales too poor to be independent, or the phenomenon of Welshness, or how many aircraft carriers would an independent Welsh have? I can show you here. I don't know if you can see them. And uh, another book, the Welsh National Anthem, its a story, its meaning, and the Red Dragon, the story of the Welsh flag. But uh, he's also done other things, for example, uh, he has, uh, he, uh, he has founded the campaign for the dot Camry domain, also the campaign for a Welsh Corica or Correingua, and of course, he's the instigator of Yes Cambry, and this is why he is here. So I'm going to turn to Enrique to tell us about Wales, and, and then Sean to tell us about the campaign. Thank you very much, Regochi, for this very nice introduction. Um, yeah, let, let me first share a few slides about Wales, if I can do so. Yeah. Are you seeing my screen now? Yeah. Uh, so my intention is to, to introduce the audience with a few numbers, quick numbers about Wales, uh, the main figures about Wales, and compare them uh, with the figures of Catalonia. Uh, well, the capital of Wales is Cardiff, with a population of around 350,000, uh, slightly smaller uh, than Barcelona, which has a population of around uh, a bit more than one and a half million inhabitants. Uh, Catalonia is around one and a half, uh, uh, the extension of Catalonia is around one and a half the, that of, the, of Wales. Uh, Wales has around 21,000 square kilometers. Uh, and the same happens with the population. Population of Wales is around 3.1 uh, million citizens, while uh, Catalan, uh, Catalonia has 7.7 uh, .7 million citizens. Uh, well, in Wales, people speak English, but the, the uh, big fraction, well, of, an important fraction of the, of the Welsh population speak Wales. 28% uh, of the population in Wales can speak Wales. And it's important to highlight here that uh, in the past years, uh, uh, the people who can speak uh, Wales have been slightly steadily uh, growing. So it's an important uh, 
good news that we can discuss with uh, our speaker today, John. Uh, in, in Catalonia, we speak uh, Catalan. Uh, uh, the, the population who can speak Catalan is around 10 million, uh, but this population is distributed uh, uh, along the Catalan countries in Valencia, the Balearic Islands, and nor uh, 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 Catalonia, and northern, northern Catalonia. Um, the National Day of Wales is the 1st of March, uh, where they celebrate uh, St. David's Day, the, the patron of, of, the, of the nation, uh, while the, the National Day of Catalonia is the 11th of September, uh, in which we commemorate the fall of Barcelona uh, in the Spanish uh, succession war in uh, 1714. That's a, a way of saying that we don't surrender. <laughs> uh, so we, we still uh, keep fighting to to get uh, our political powers back to to well and uh, to the to the nation. Let's say. With regard to the economy, uh, Wales uh, has a, a GDP as big as 75 billion pounds, uh, whereas the Catalonia has to hand, uh, well around 250 billion euros. Uh, with respect to the rest of uh, the United Kingdom, uh, Wales is a bit less wealthier. Uh, it's uh, and well has a has a, um, a GDP per capita of around 19,000, while Catalonia has a, a GDP per capita a slightly bigger of 32,000 um, uh, euros. Um, and it's important to say, well, it's important to, to highlight here with respect to the unemployment rate, uh, Wales has uh, an unemployment rate which is <laughs> very much slower compared to, to the Catalan unemployment rate, 3.8%, while Catalonia has uh, an, employment, an unemployment rate of 13.2%. So let's have a quick look at the, 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 the electoral outcome of Wales. Let me, well, you will find here the the percentage of votes and seats won by parties at devolved elections compared to England. Well, on your left hand side, these are the the, the electoral outcomes in the past uh, elections in in Scotland. But I would like to focus uh, in this plot here, uh, with with which is related to the Welsh Assembly. Uh, well, we can see that the Labour Party has always had a strong support in Wales. Uh, there is an important representation of the Plate Cymru, the, the, the nationalist uh, party. Um, and well, when we, we can say that Britain is a very plural and diverse uh, country, so it depends very much on the, the region that, well, the parties have different supports, right? So, well, it's important to highlight the, the, the presence of the Labour Party and a decreasing presence of the Lib Dem, the Liberal Democrat Party that, that they have been decreasing in support in the past years. Uh, with regard to the 2019 UK general elections, we, we and focusing now on the, on the on the case of Wales, uh, we can see here like there is a, a very <laughs> also very diverse uh, um, outcome. Uh, the Plate Cymru has a strong presence in the counties that uh, can be found here on the west coast. The Labour Party has more power in the south, and, and also there is a strong presence of the Conservative, of course. Um, well, with regard to the Brexit, Brexit is an important matter now in, in the British politics. So, um, Wales, in, 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 in Wales, the, the Brexit won, the, the Brexit is won the, the referendum the, by, well, by a very tiny amount, that 52.5% of the population uh, voted Brexit, while 47.5% voted Remain. Uh, again, we see a, a diverse, uh, well, the, that the map in Wales, uh, with regard to the support to Brexit, is, 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 is very diverse. We see that the, uh, some regions supported uh, remain more than others. So, yeah, we have to consider that when, when looking at uh, Wales politics. Well, another variable which is gaining support now to describe the Welsh politics is the, the support to independence. And recently, there has been a new campaign. I think it was created in 2016 if I, or 2014, John, if I'm not wrong. Uh, and this is one of the slogan uh, that uh, which is has which famous slogan: "Big enough, rich enough, smart enough, hot enough." Uh, 
and I am saying that uh, they are gaining support, and because polls and surveys are clearly demonstrating that, this is the well. The, when when Welsh people are asked about the, the independence, we can see that there is a uh, a growing fraction of the of the Welsh uh, that are well starting to say yes to independence. And very recent surveys uh, uh, well claim that around a third of the population in Wales would support the independence of Wales. So this is why this is becoming an important matter uh, in 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 Wales and and. We, as an independentist organization of Catalonia, uh, are very kind of discussing this. So today we have with us uh, John Jobbins, who is, uh, as Begochi was introducing very well, uh, he's a writer. Uh, he has written uh, several books about uh, uh, Wales, the phenomenon of Welshness. Well, Begochi was doing that. I won't, I'm not going to repeat it. Also about the Welsh national anthem, uh, the Red Dragon. Uh, he's a politician. He's uh, very active in uh, on, on the issues related to to anything related to Wales. <laughs> An academic. He he's a development officer for law, politics, social sciences and philosophy at Aberystwyth uh, University. So uh, having said that, it's time to, well, to give the word to Sean. Hi, John. Hello, good evening, everyone. And thank you for that very, um, I, I felt like I've just died, uh, Enrique. I've, I've heard my obituary now. So I know what will happen when I die <laughs> and what people will say. Uh, <laughs> Thanks for your time. Thanks for everyone for joining us today. It's a great pleasure to speak to you tonight. Uh, I'm very glad um, Catalonia has been an inspiration for me as an individual and the Basque Country as well, Bogotá. Uh, but Catalonia has been inspiration for me as an individual. I have good friends there. There's been a lot of help to me in, uh, personally as well. I'll say a few words about that quickly. Uh, and it's also an inspiration for the national movement here in Wales. Um, and yes, Cymru was founded in 2016 officially, uh, but we'd been starting things from about the time of the Scottish Inf um, independence referendum. Um, so I'll say, I'll say very quick words how um, Catalonia has influenced me. Then a few words about how, how Catalonia has influenced Wales. And then I'll say a few words about the movement itself, if that's okay. And then we can have questions and any questions people have. Uh, so my personal ins inspiration from Catalonia is um, in 1999, a, a good man from Gracia in Barcelona called Albert Bergesi Ibidal stayed with me. He learned Welsh. Uh, I still speak to him in Welsh on WhatsApp and uh, he's a good friend. He now lives in Eronia in Pamplona and Basque Country. Um, and he opened my eyes to all things happening in Barcelona and in Catalonia. I've been there three or four times. Uh, when I started the campaign for Dot Cymru, the top level domain on the internet, uh, I was inspired by Punt Cat in Catalonia. Uh, because Punt Cat had succeeded, we in Wales or I decided, okay, we need to have Dot Cymru or Dot Cum. So we got in touch with the Punt Cat uh, Foundation with um, Amadeo Abrele y Abril, who's a great man and a great help to us. So there would not be a Dot Cymru. Uh, with it not for Catalonia. It's as simple as that. You know, we would not have a dot company. So if you if you see our website, it's called yes dot Um if you see if you look at the Welsh football team, they use the FAW dot uh, the Welsh government uses CLO, which is the acronym for government in Welsh, CLO dot Cymru on its gov dot Wales. There's also dot Wales available. So this would not have happened without Catalonia. It would not have happened without very good people um, in Catalonia helping us. I was on the phone or emailing Amadeo almost every week from about 2006 onwards. So, Diolch and Vaur, muchas gracias to people in Catalonia. I was also inspired by Catalonia um, because, as Bigotra knows, I started Rasa Riaith, which is the Welsh version of Corica and your Corayengua in Catalonia. That again was a big inspiration for me to see how the Catalan people had revived the language and a practical and a, a mass way of doing that. And I think that's inspired, inspired the work we do, or certainly the way I approach Yes Cymru. Uh, and also, I think uh, 
at the beginning of the last decade when you started having these monster rallies for um, Somo Nacio. This was huge. And I was telling people in Wales, why don't we have these kind of rallies in Wales? Now, I think there's a structural, structural difference in the Spanish state where the people in Basque Country and Catalonia are more ready to go in big marches. There, there isn't that tradition in Wales. I've tried to change that and, and other people. But then when we saw that, and then when we saw the referendums in the towns and villages in Catalonia, and then we saw, I was in the referendum in 2014, I stayed with Elisenda in, um, on the di Via di Diagonal, is it? Uh, Avenue Diagonal in Barcelona. I was, I was uh, overlooking the voting in Echample. And that was a great inspiration to see the organisation you have in Catalonia, the way people of all different classes come together, not always agreeing with each other, and then getting things done. And I remember the first time I went to Catalonia was around 2003. Uh, we stayed in, in Barcelona, then we went to stay with uh, Albert. Uh, it was stayed in, in Girona and then in Besalú, where my friends stayed, uh, lived. And I remember walking in Girona and seeing a stand by, I think it was Cup, is it like the, the more left wing independent, independentist party. And there were literally three men and a dog on this stand for independence. And it looked quite you know sad it looked it wasn't much happening they were they were very friendly and then you know five years later you had a million people on the street marching for independence so this is what i've been telling people in wales um i miss my my computer's annoying sorry if we got sure i don't know what it is uh, but i've been telling the people in wales you know when they feel disheartened i was telling them when i was in in girona in around 2003 4 you know there wasn't much happening there but then within five years, they had a million people on the streets. So this is possible. People can change, countries can change. I think Catalonia was the inspiration for me to do that. So when we started Yes Cymru around 2014, it was started uh, for two reasons. One, we wanted to support the Scots in their referendum. And there was also uh, an existential fear in Wales that if, if Scotland did vote for independence, then we would be left by ourselves here in Wales with, with just England. And we would be incorporated into England. So in a way, it's lucky for us that Scotland didn't vote independence in 2014. It's given us time to build a mass movement. And what we've tried to do, and what I've learned from the gas country and from Catalonia, is the importance of having mass movements. So the tradition of Welsh nationalism has always been quite a quiet one, always been quite an intellectual one, uh, quite a polite movement. Um, Plaid Cymru, the Welsh Nationalist Party, was founded in 1925 as a direct result of the First World War. So people felt it's a pointless war for British imperialism. There's a very strong pacifist uh, feeling to the national movement because of the disgust of the First World War. And then obviously we'd seen what happened in Ireland and Ireland had independence without going through with the British state. There's always been quite a quiet and, and also a, an aversion and a fear or um, a snobbery towards having people on the streets. So I think many people in the Welsh National Movement think that having, why they quite like the idea of having thousands of people on the streets marching for independence, they didn't like the ideas of flags. They didn't like the ideas of the noise and the simple messaging. And I was determined, and the other people with Yes Cymru, that Yes Cymru would be a mass popular movement. So not populist in the sense of Trump uh, and Brexit, but popular and mobilizing ordinary people, the people who go to support Wales in football, people who go to support Wales in rugby, the people who feel Welsh, but they do not express that politically. And we've started to see the success of that by having simple message, seeing that simple message over and over, but also giving people in Wales confidence. And the feeling in Wales, and thanks, Enrique, for giving those that information, you can see the problem we have. So unlike Catalonia, where everyone can understand Catalan, and most people can speak it, 
that's not the case in Wales. Um, unlike in Catalonia, where the country is rich compared to the state, to the British Spanish state, that's the reverse in Wales by and large. Uh, and in the Spanish state, Catalonia is an important component. In, West, in, in the UK, Wales isn't. So people in Wales think Wales is po too poor, they think Wales is too small, and they think Wales is too weak. So our message is to say we can do this, and we tell them why and how. And that message is starting to get through. The big change in Wales now, and there's lots of reasons for this. Um, I think people are looking to see what's happening in Scotland, maybe the more politically attuned people. People are starting to ask what happens if Scotland leaves. People know that Northern Ireland will reunite with Ireland. The, the British nationalists pretend it's not going to happen, but this is going to happen, guaranteed. Uh, and so people start to think that Brexit, although Wales voted Brexit, uh, I was very much against it because it's a British nationalist movement. Uh, but they managed to appeal to a lot of people in very poor areas of Wales uh, to vote for Brexit. Uh, but Brexit has changed a lot of things in Wales. So for a lot of people who who are quite happy with the British idea, and in Britain we have this idea of you know the family of nations, so Wales, Scotland, Northern Ireland, England. People in Wales like that. Um, I think a lot of people who maybe voted Remain with Brexit, this idea that the UK was not perfect, but an okay government. It wasn't a bad government. It wasn't a government which uh, is racist or anything. I think a lot of people in the last four years have started their, their, their confidence in the British state and in Westminster has been shaken. And they started to look for other um, answers. Uh, we've also seen the last year with COVID uh, in Wales, the Welsh Government is responsible for education and health and other things. So, I mean, essentially, COVID in Wales is run by the Welsh Government. But obviously, the finance is with Westminster. But people, although they maybe disagree with what the Welsh Government has done in detail, feel by and large the Welsh Government has handled COVID better than Westminster. And this has been huge in Wales because until last year, I think most people in Wales thought that Westminster was the, the grown up, the proper government and government in Wales was the small government, the, the child government, the baby government. And now they've seen that the Welsh government is not only different, but can be different, but also can do things better. And I think that's a big change. So at the beginning of 2020, Yes Cymru had about 2000 members. Today we have 16,000 members. So it's been a huge change. And the people coming into the movement are not the segadors, as you say in Catalonia. It's not the, the people you always see fighting for the language, not the people who fight for Welsh education, it's not the people fighting for Welsh television. These are people, a lot of them from the Labour movement or Labour party voters, people who don't speak Welsh, um, people who are English. Um, and they, they, they started to see the, there's a place for them. And that is interesting because it's changed the whole dynamic of the movement. So Yes Cymru, the name was chosen because yes, as in Scotland, yes, Scot uh, independence. Cymru is the Welsh word for Wales. And the word is, the name is bilingual. So that is purposely to show that we are a bilingual nation, which is a big thing in Wales because maybe unlike Catalonia, but maybe more like Basque country, I'm to show the issue of the language can be used to divide people. And what we're seeing now is that people don't speak Welsh. They are supportive of the language. Maybe the children go to a Welsh school, but they feel part of this now. And that hasn't really happened before in Wales. What happens in the next 12 months? I have no idea. We have an election in Wales, as in Scotland, in May for the Welsh Parliament. Um, at the moment, the Labour Party is still the strongest party. Plaid, the Nationalist Party, has hasn't quite broken through, certainly not like the SNP. I don't understand why exactly. The big thing for us is, yes, Cymru, we'll, we will not tell people which party to vote, but we'll contact every candidate, ask them how they stand for independence, and we will share that information. Uh, the important thing for us is the, the new government in May has a path towards independence. So if Scotland votes for independence, which they will, I think, 
but we in Wales need to have a government in Cardiff which will say, okay, you know, we now start our process to have a referendum or a vote independence. That is the most important thing. I think if we have a referendum, it should be very, very, very tight, but I think we can win it. But we need to have the constitutional paths in place. Oh. I've spoken too much. That oh, noise is yeah. getting on your nerves. So I'm going to be oh, quiet fine. and then you can ask questions. Yeah, well, I have a question with, with respect to, to these last words. Um, so how is the political campaign? Yes, Cymru. Um, well, how does, does it interact with the, the other parties in, in Wales? Has, I mean, with respect to Plaid Cymru or, I don't know, the Labour's, uh, how, how, how do you interact with them? Uh, yes, it's a good question. Um, um, Plaid Cymru is the main nationalist party. We, they, they've said they want a referendum in the next five years if they're in government in Cardiff. Uh, they produced a, a book about independence, which was published in September. Uh, their lead, Adam Price, is 100% for independence. So I think it may be a little bit... Um, so Plaid Cymru is aligned with Esquerra Republicana in Catalonia. That's a sister party. But maybe from a constitutional point of view, it was more similar historically to CIU. You know, the idea of independence was there, but it's never really pushed. So the big change in the last year, two years, is now, for the first time ever, really, Plaid Cymru is talking about independence. So that is because of Yes Cymru, because we made independence a word people use. Plaid Cymru never used the word independence before. It was afraid to use this word. So Yes Cymru has made independence a normal word. So now Plaid Cymru actually talk about it. Uh, we, on social media, we retweet stuff. Our policy, we try not to retweet, say on Twitter, we will try not to retweet something by Plaid Cymru Twitter. But if Adam Price, the Plaid Cymru re leader, tweets something about independence, or is interesting, we will retweet that. Um, we will also retweet stuff by the Labour Party. They are against independence. There is, there is a Labour for Indie Wales group. So Labour Party members in Wales who support independence. So we retweet stuff by them. We would also retweet or share. Maybe there's an interesting article written by a Labour Party member of Parliament in Wales. You know, on the subject of independence or the constitution, we will share that and interact. Uh, the Green Party in Wales, which is very small, uh, they now said they are in favour of independence if there was a referendum. So I don't think they would campaign to have the referendum, but they say if there is a referendum, they will vote yes. And that's a big change. The big opponents are obviously the Conservatives, and they become even more anti-Welsh devolution, uh, and they're certainly anti-independence. There was a, 10 years ago, there was quite a warm feeling maybe towards devolution. Since Brexit, they've gone completely, well, against independence and, and even now against devolution. So that's, so we, we are, yes, Cymru is a non-party political, so we don't align with any party. That's been successful. That's been a very successful strategy for us. I think it's created a cultural space where people who are not in a political party or maybe in the Labour Party or who maybe do vote play but not a member of Plaid or whatever, uh, they can follow Yes Company or join Yes Company and they don't feel they have to change. So we tell people you can join with Yes Company, you don't have to change your language, you, you don't have to learn Welsh, you don't have to be Welsh. You don't have to, we don't tell you who to vote for. You don't have to change your religion or your ethnicity or your sexuality. We take you as you are. So we're, the, the line in the Bridget Jones's diary film, you know, I love you as you are. We, we, so as long as you're not a bigot and racist and you know, homophobic, you know, we, we accept you. So we have, if you like, a base of moral principles so anti-racist, anti-homophobic, but the policies we don't, you know, we don't decide if Wales would be in NATO. We don't decide if Wales would be in the European Union or would Wales have the Euro or whatever. We don't make that decision. That's up for the political parties. It, it's interesting to see like, like what happens in Catalonia, how uh, since you are building a very inclusive 
independentist movement, I believe that um, in the end, this is pushing the, the, the other parties and the population of the country to more progressive ideas To Because in the end, you have to talk about civil rights, uh, ruling your country by your own. And there is a, an interesting debate that I think that, yeah, this is like an earthquake to the to the to the to the rest of the parties in, in the country that in the end they have to to decide what they think <laughs> in the in the main issues related to the I mean it's interesting to see that in the end Wales and Catalonia in this regard with respect to the to the independentist movement I think they are behaving uh, similarly uh, in yeah and it's also interesting to to see how how you talk very often about the indie curious people that that's that's a sign of like you are trying to find new people new uh yeah uh, so new new supporters of the for the independence yeah i think um words are important and uh we have this you know i'll discuss i mean indie curious i think was used first by um a lady called Sandy Club, who's an English girl who's lived, she's moved to Wales, she's learned Welsh, and she started using this word. And it's a great word because it gives people who don't want to commit some way of showing that they, they've opened the door, but they're still waiting. And, you know, we don't push people. If they want to come in, we want them to come in. But words like this are very interesting. And a lot of people like this word, indie curious, because it, it shows them that they are interested, but they're not 100%. Um, and it's a bit like the discussion about, you know, um, uh, the, the, the women's movement had, uh, Me Too. You know, people knew that women had always been, you know, abused at the workplace or maybe something like this, but there was never a word for it. And once you had the Me Too word, then a lot of women could say, actually, maybe not been raped or something, but being felt threatened, there was a word for this feeling. And that allowed millions of people across the world to say, yes, this is my experience as well. And this is what Indie Curious has done, is given thousands of people in Wales a word to say, yes, this is how I feel. And uh, so words are important. We use Indie Curious, um, we use Indie Wales as a obviously a hashtag, and we now see people saying Indie Confident. But it's interesting how this word, you know, which nobody used four or three years ago, has now become quite a popular one. And so words people use are very important because it gives expression to how they feel. And if they can say that, we're winning. We had our first rally in Cardiff in 2019. And again, we we see pictures of rallies in Catalonia and Basque country and we think, how do you do this? You know, this for us this is amazing that you could have hundreds of thousands of people. No, oh, this just doesn't happen in the UK except sometimes. So I think maybe there's there's structural and historical reasons for that, and also to do with urban planning. You know, when you have a lot of people in Barcelona in a very small area with the the flats with the apartments the same you know in Donostia Bilbao it's easy to have a lot of people you know our we have a lot of dispersed population but in the big surprise in Cardiff was people turned up because people were expecting no one to turn up uh, and what I was saying there for me the important thing with Yes Cymru is to make people feel good about themselves so I tell people in Yes Cymru we need if we can have people feel good about three things. One, when they come to a Yes Cymru rally or event, when they feel good about themselves as an individual, almost a mental health point of view. You know, they just feel good because life is shit. Life is hard, especially in Britain now with Brexit. It's people are de clinically depressed, you know, and with maybe with Trump and all the things, people are depressed. And people are always depressed with the language and everything, you know. So if people can come to a Yes Cymru event and feel happy, that's such a powerful feeling. So we want people to come to Yes Cymru feel happy about themselves. We want them to feel happy about Wales, that Wales is not a shit country, that Wales isn't some kind of 
poor country which can't do anything, that they feel, okay, Wales is the third best country in the world for recycling. Wales is 15% of Europe's tidal power. We could be exporting electricity. Wales had the first locomotive train. Wales, there were more literate people in Wales in the 18th century than in most other nations. People could read and write in Welsh. Wales is not a shit country. So if we can tell up, the second point is important. The third point, if we can make them feel happy about their Welshness. So it's a big thing in Wales, maybe not so much in Catalonia, but you know, and Bigotrans, you know, people they you know they feel they have to speak Welsh to be Welsh. Uh, they have to be a particular type of Welsh speaker to be Welsh. So there's all kind of complexes. A lot of them are, to, are not based on reality. But sometimes you people really use this excuse not to go that further step. So it's important for us coming to say, we are not pointing at you. We're not telling you how to be Welsh. We accept your Welshness. However, so if you're black, you can come with us. If you're English, you can come with us. If you're, if your Welsh is rubbish Welsh, you can come with us. If you speak macaronic Welsh, fine, that's not a problem. You know, you can come with us. And what happens, be, people become more Welsh naturally because they're affinity. But if we can make them feel happy in their Welshness, then we win because it's about feelings, not just the economy. We then have to back up stuff with the economy, but feelings are so important. And it's not, it's not a science. People are not robots. People are feelings. No matter how poor someone is, they are still proud people. And you know, we, we want oh, yeah. them to be proud of our Wales. We want them also to have, we want, nationalism works. Yeah, internationalism I, I, doesn't it, work. It's about feelings, but the truth is that with the Yes Camry campaign, in the end, you are start, starting to put things on the table about uh, the future of Wales. Like the, uh, I've read your uh, leaflet, well, your book uh, about the, the independence of in your pocket, <laughs> and y yeah, you start to well to speculate on how an independent Wales would be, which I, I believe that's a good exercise to do, to, to start building this independentist movement. Uh, and yeah, you speculate, will Wales have the uh, sterling pound in the future, the euro or its own currency or, well, many other issues. I mean, the, the book is, is, uh, uh, is, is a short book, but you are starting to, yeah, to, well, to, to debate and discuss what the, the, the possibilities uh, behind independence, which is uh, a, basic, a basic exercise to, uh, to do. Westminster is a con. Right? Westminster is a corrupt, horrible institution. You know, people, and I think Brexit has been a big surprise for people in Europe to see how bad Westminster is. Westminster has always been like this always been like this but brexit has made it obvious to people in in germany or in spanish state or in america about the kind of people who run britain um so what yes company is also doing i think there's quite a although we don't take a left-wing right-wing point of view i think if you follow us on social media it's quite obviously the compass is towards the left you know without being a partisan and you know, to some extent, Welsh national identity is also a class issue. So I, I wouldn't call myself a socialist. I, I, I can't be bothered, basically, with the whole discussion. But, you know, it is a class issue because, you know, we, we are being ruled from England by a, a class of people who've gone to the same very expensive schools. You know, they've gone to the same clubs. They are, they are literally been running the country for centuries. Um, so people, so we are, I think, and people in Wales understand this, and people know this, uh, but they never really expressed it. And I think what Yes Companies and the independence movement is filling a vacuum, which um, in a way, which a lot of the class movement did maybe 40 years ago. Um, so it's giving people a chance for that. And we're telling people, look, Westminster is the con and whichever party is there, there's only so much they can do because there's a system there to stop them doing stuff. Wales has never voted for the Conservative Party. 
the majority, but we still get Conservative rule. And that's the kind of argument which we win. There are people who will never, ever, ever vote independence. Same in Catalonia, you know, the PP will never vote independence. Yeah. There's no point. Yeah. Uh, uh, in, as this, uh, I think uh, uh, Scotland and Wales have quite a few things in common, uh, starting for Westminster, uh, which is not clearly in favour of uh, Scottish and Welsh independence movements. Uh, but there's things that uh, you Welsh people should be happy about, uh, such as number of speakers. Uh, and that's that's a very positive point that that you you have a very, quite strong one. So um, you are taking inspiration from lots of things. Um, how are you organized as a YF movement? Uh, are, are, are you planning uh, to, to grow somehow? Are you using other platforms because collaboration between Scotland, Catalonia and other places uh, may, may be helpful? Uh, and the next thing is uh, in Scotland, there's no national uh, Television is there a national television in Welsh? Yeah. Okay. Um, yes, we have a television in Welsh language, so S4C, uh, which was founded in 1982 after a lot of protests for two decades, and a plaid company MP threatened to go on hunger strike to have it. Um, but it's like in Scotland. Then with we have BBC Wales, as you have BBC Scotland. It's very good um so that's a bit and the media in Wales is a big problem even more than scotland because in scotland there are some scottish papers which people read and there are more of them so the herald the scotsman the yeah the national but we don't have that so the media is the big problem in wales um and getting information out that is even more a problem in, Scot in scotland so that is the huge problem that's the biggest problem we have uh, in terms of getting rich people and that's the difference I think the big difference between Scotland and Wales and Catalonia I think your the media in Catalonia uh, television your trace is it is very popular you know you have the different papers uh, in Catalan uh, local radio stations that that isn't the the media landscape in Wales so it's huge it's a big big problem so so that Yes Cymru is so successful, it surprises me. Because I am not too sure how people hear about Welsh news. Because um, om Wales is almost, in terms of um, reading Welsh news, Wales is almost illiterate. You know, it is so weak that it's almost illiterate. So people somehow are hearing the news of Yes Cymru. And I'm not too sure how. So they hear it in social media. Uh, our supporters, I don't know who they are, put stickers for Yes Cymru all over the place. I think that increases people's interest. Um, so the movement is very much a grassroots movement, and I think that appeals to people who maybe don't trust politicians or don't like don't want to be aligned with a political party. So at the moment, I think the very fact that Yes Cymru is quite amateur has been a big benefit for us. Um, we are now, thanks to the, all the new members, have money to spend it. We do spend money on social media. We do spend money on trying to promote things on Facebook. But I think we now have to in increase our game to get more information out, better information, especially about the economy, and try and reach different people. Um, I think there's a constituency of people in Wales who have no idea about anything to do with Welsh politics. You know, they live in a total Anglophone world. And they could live in Aberystwyth. I know the newspapers they read, the radio they listen to, the television programmes, their friends could be totally Anglophone. Uh, and those people, maybe we will never actually quite reach them. But the other people we can reach. What has happened in Wales, uh, the one thing which we've been able to connect with is through football. So the Welsh football team has become very successful and popular. And I think, and it's also drawing in different type of people. And the networks that creates has been a big benefit, I think, for us uh, in, in Yes Cymru. And it is not a coincidence that Yes Cymru started to grow after Wales was in the European Championship 2016. 
that for Welsh society was huge because for the first time people went to Europe as Welsh people and Wales was well known and Welsh people met other Welsh people from different parts of Wales and started to discuss ideas and I think for a lot of people in Wales that had never happened before and the kind of um, relationships and then the social media with that has been a big um, conduit, a big vehicle for the ESC community to reach different types of people. Uh, so we're still um, amateur, it's still voluntary. I do, this is not my job. If there are problems with that. There are some groups which are very weak. People fall out with each other. People have stupid arguments about things. People get fed up. Uh, people. Uh, so that's, that's very movable. But we try to tell people if it's coming too much for you, just walk away, have a break. You know, it's a long war. You know, the, you have to look after yourself. I know some groups will be very popular and very successful for a few months, and maybe then they're tired and then they don't do much and then they come back after. But we don't have a, an election and there is no referendum at the moment. So at the moment, we're just trying to build the movement. So anything which anyone does is good. So this week, someone has started Yes Cymru Cycling Group on Twitter. So people who like to cycle can now, you know, they don't pay anything. This is someone started this stuff. Someone has started Yes Cymru Running Group. So people can <coughs> run in the name Yes Cymru. So these things come and go. But the great thing is people feel they can do it. So people feel that Yes Cymru is almost a franchise where they can do something which they like in the name of Yes Cymru. And I think that's a very powerful message then. Other than that, uh, what else are you encouraging uh, your people to do for, for, for Wales? I mean, um, other than do whatever they want in the way they want in the name of building up uh, this future for Wales, uh, there's anything that you think uh, people should start thinking about um, about Wales or what to do for Wales? We haven't really gone down that path. We tend to try and if you look at us on Twitter, we tend to try and support Welsh things. So maybe someone started producing T-shirts with national slogans. We will retweet that. Um, sometimes maybe a charity does something for Wales. We tend to retweet something maybe to do with the Welsh language or something which promotes so, uh, ethnic diversity in Wales. We try to promote that as well. Um, what is happening is quite interesting. There's um, so we, we try and keep it just to independence. I mean, there's a danger if we do too much. Uh, there would be people who would be unhappy with something. A member of our central committee is actually starting a bank. So a new bank in Wales called Bank Cambria, which Cambria is the Latin word for Wales, uh, which hopefully will be starting this year. So we have people actually doing stuff like starting a bank, which is part of the S Cymru movement. And there's a programme on Radio 4, BBC Radio 4, this week, I think on Tuesday or Monday, where an economist in Cardiff University said he would never have supported independence 10 years ago, but now he thinks that only through independence can change happen in the Welsh economy. You know, this is this is incredible. You know, this is a vice dean of the business school in Cardiff, which is a big business school, now saying he supports independence because he thinks that's the only way we can actually sort out the economy of Wales. And same with Scotland, uh, because it's it's not gonna happen through Westminster. Uh, so with the ESCME, we try to keep just to independence. We, we, you know, sometimes we had a discussion, in, for instance, we had a discussion about a month ago, uh, this talk of opening a military medicine museum in Cardiff, which is a bizarre thing to open. And people wanted us to campaign against this military medicine museum. And why I think most ESCME people are against this we thought, well, the danger if we campaign against this military museum, then you know we'll end up someone saying, well, why don't you campaign for you know, nuclear power in you know in Anglesey, or why don't you campaign to save this hospital in Swansea, something? So we we said we sort of said no. We retweeted stuff. We sort of gave um, an implicit support, but we didn't do anything. So we just keep on independence where we can. Just a bit, I lived through that, I, the big scar for me, I lived through that through the 1980s in Britain. 
with the Thatcher years, and the left thought that there could be a rainbow alliance with all the different left groups coming together, and that would create a majority, but it didn't. You know, what happened was all the different groups just wanted to use the platform to push their own priorities. So I think for us in the S Company, the lesson for me is we stick for independence and that's it. That is our gig. We don't we don't campaign for anything. We don't campaign for the language. We don't campaign for Black Lives Matter, which is a big issue last year. We, we retweeted a lot of stuff. We said we supported this, but we didn't go further, although people wanted us to to go further. They said, no, we, we, are, we just stick to Yes Company. So I think if you follow Yes Company, you can see where we where we stand you know, morally in the political spectrum, but we don't go to campaign for anything else. Uh, proof of your success is that you started being attacked in, in social media, because I follow you. <laughs> um, but, and it's true that you are gathering the momentum now, but it's probably halted by the coronavirus. So what are you doing now that you cannot really hold these marches and do you do things like this online? What kind, what sort of activities are you doing? How are you going to manage your success? Because it can be dangerous. Yes, well, I expect things to fall apart any minute, we got you. Every day I think, so far, so good. When will this end? <laughs> so I, I'm, I'm a bit of a piss, pessimist. Uh, I have no idea. I think, oh, this noise is irritating. Sorry, I don't know what's happened. It's a problem with the um, computer. It's fine. We can hear you well. Right, okay. Um, you know, the election in May is very important. So, I mean, I think that how that happens is going to be, decides what happens for the next forever, I think, in Wales. We are being attacked. It was quite interesting when in back in October, the Welsh government, because COVID numbers were going up, decided they want to call what in Wales was called a fire break. So two week lockdown to try and stop the growth in COVID. And there was, it should have been more than two weeks, but the Westminster government refused to give money to the Welsh government to finance this to pay businesses to be closed. Uh, and um, the Tory party and a lot of bots started to attack this fire brick. Uh, so while Yes Cymru isn't a pro-Welsh government movement, we are pro-Welsh government uh, in well, as Welsh Parliament. And we had loads of bots attacking the Welsh government all the time. Every single video on Twitter or Facebook by the Welsh government with that, which had a nurse or a doctor from a hospital in Wales say, look, things are getting worse, please stop. You had bots of people saying, you know, there's no COVID, it's just a flu, I can't see, the, the hospital's empty. Um, and they started attacking us as well. Uh, funny enough, two weeks later, England understood they had to go into lockdown as well. And the money for furlough was available. And in, in, literally in one day, the bots stop. So from having loads of bots attacking us or, any, or anything to do with Wales, anything which could be used to damage the Welsh Parliament, um, it stopped. Once England said, okay, Westminster, which is basically in COVID terms, is the government for England. Once they said, no, we need to go into some kind of fire break in England as well, um, then that stopped. So there are people there and we started seeing groups we saw a group started yesterday, we noticed, which is trying to have a, a ethno-nationalism, um, which is which is, uses the, the Celtic cross, which is some kind of a fascistic, I don't know why, fascistic symbol. Uh, so I don't know if this is a genuine account or if there's someone trying to draw attention away from us. So, so we are aware, uh, we, there will be more, you know, I think it's now in the last few months that the Tories have started to realise they have a problem. So I mean, now that you know, the last poll for independence, there was something like three, thirty-three percent said they would vote for independence tomorrow if they voted. You know, and this is huge in Wales. So four years ago, it was ten percent. You know, so this is huge. This may go down a bit. I don't know, but I think that's where we're we're at. 
you know, so we're expecting now more attacks. Um, and you know, it's going to be dirty and it's, it's dangerous for us because the Welsh media is so weak. Um, we don't have, and like certainly Basque Country, where you have several daily newspapers, you know, different parties, but you know, they don't, people do read the Basque newspapers. And in Catalonia, we don't have that. So, I mean, it's very dangerous for us. There is a question. Ah, sorry, we got you. Yeah, no. I, I know there's been initiatives to have a, a Welsh uh, newspaper, at least digital. I think you're not. You're not. There's nothing happening on that side, at least a digital newspaper. Yes, I'm not sure what's happening for that. I mean, something called Nation dot Cymru uh, sat. But I mean, that's that's very popular with our uh, followers and has grown as well. But I mean, for most people in Wales, this is just totally unknown. You know, so I mean. So, so that's that's why I, I am I am surprised that we're doing so well. I, I generally don't know how people are hearing about independence. Um, the other thing, and it's the same in Scotland, is there's a big um, generation difference. So support for independence is surprisingly, well, for us, quite um, uh, consistent across Wales. So North Wales, South Wales, East Wales, it's around. 25 to 30 percent, it's on a quarter to a third now support independence. Uh, the big difference is in age. So people over 65 don't like independence. They just, we are not popular with retired people. So young people, uh, 16, 18 to 24, it's about 45 percent support independence. So it's becoming a, um, a common sense view. So I'm 52, my generation, people maybe in 30s or 40s, it's around 34, 40%. So I'm surprised by these numbers myself. Um, the big drop off is over 65, where only 16% support independence. So there's a big, big problem with the older generation. I think a part of that is because if you are old, you know, the British state has been quite good to you. So if you were born in 1940s, 1950s in the UK, you had full employment, you maybe had a council house, you had free education, free university education, you had money if you were unemployed, uh, free healthcare. If you're 50 and under, then the British state has not given you anything, nothing. There is nothing which the British state has given you. you know, so. Whilst people may not be against the British state, the emotional attachment isn't there. So people like British culture, they like British pop music, they like British comedy, they like British drama, uh, like British humour, they like that. But you don't have to have a government for that. But the things which governments do, do well, if you're under 50, what has Britain, the Westminster, given you? So there's a big, that's the big dislocation um, in age, I think. Uh, and that's one reason why I think people then are more open and are more in the curious with independence because they don't feel that emotional attachment to Westminster, whereas people born 1940s and 1950s do. And perhaps for the younger, then there is a problem because the influence of London is too strong, maybe. And many Welsh young people are migrating to, to London or England. Is it a problem to, well, for the, for the movement? Um, that's because the, the demographic issue, let's put it like that, is the biggest problem we have. So movement of young people outside of Wales, except maybe to Cardiff, and movement of people into Wales, very often old people, older people. So this is the biggest, this is the biggest challenge for the Welsh language, by far. Everything else is doable. Education is doable. Making Welsh trendy is doable. Status is doable. The big problem is the demographic change. So young yeah. people are um, receptive to Yes Cymru. It's about 45% support independence, maybe a bit more, a bit less, I forget. Uh, and I think they, a lot of them are open to it. Also, I think the same in with Catalonia and Basque Country, you know, they've grown up with uh, a Welsh parliament. 
So if you're if you're under thirty, you don't remember time without. We had we, the, the Welsh Assembly was founded in 1999. So if you're under thirty, you don't remember time without the Assembly. So the Assembly in Welsh government is normal for you. Also, um, um, respect or interest in the Welsh language is a big difference between old and young as well. So younger people, even if they don't speak Welsh and don't come from a Welsh speaking background or area, are not afraid of the Welsh language. Older people, uh, have more of them have more negative attitudes towards the language. Now that may be because a big number of those people have actually moved into Wales. So it's unfamiliar to them, but also it, 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 it it's to do with the education. So everyone in Wales, and everyone under 30 in Wales has had an element of Welsh medium education. So in Wales, we have Welsh medium schools where everything is taught through the medium of Welsh. And that's around 25%. So it's not, you know, the Welsh government has been rubbish with that. That's the big failure of the Welsh Parliament. And like in Catalonia and in, in Basque Country where education is prioritised, the Labour Party, which is run Wales from people has never really prioritised it. But everyone has an element of Welsh and is taught not excellent in every way, but is better than it was in the 1970s or 60s, where Welsh was taught as a almost as a foreign language. So you'd have been taught French or Welsh. So my father in school, he happened to be in the French class, he could have easily been or Latin. You know? So now even in English medium schools. Welsh is now taught in a more tactile way, in a more interesting way. So the younger people are not afraid of Welsh. And this is something I've seen in Yes Cymru. And this is a big issue in Wales, the, the fear of the language. And it's I mean, been used uh, to divide Wales. I, I compare it a little bit like um, the attitudes towards homosexuality or gay people. So, I mean, when I was growing up, you know, people who were gay were, were attacked or whatever. Um, Whereas by now, I think most people are quite relaxed. So maybe they are not gay, but they don't have a problem with it. And they, you know, their cousin is gay or their brother or something, you know, it's, it's a normal part of any growing up. And I think in a way it's similar with Welsh. So people say, I don't speak Welsh. You know, I have no great interest in it, but I'm not, it's not a problem for me. So the old divide, which the British state could use or the opponents of Wales could use was, you know, if you support independence, all these Welsh speakers will tell you what to do. You know, that doesn't work anymore because people are not afraid of language. And that's another big, big difference in age. So the younger you go, so from 40 years old and younger, 30 years old, even if people don't speak Welsh, even if it's not their big thing, they're not afraid of it. And when we started Yes Cymru in 2014-15, I thought the Welsh language would be a big dividing issue. I thought it would be a, prob a problem for us, but it hasn't really. I mean, there are issues. Some people think we do too much in Welsh. Some people think we don't do enough in Welsh, but by and large, it's not a not an issue in a way which I thought it would be. I, I thought it would be one of the big splits which has happened in the language movement and it's happened in every other national movement. But yes, we has a lot of that is because our supporters mostly young or youngish and the language isn't a problem for them. The other interesting thing, I'll finish with this, is social media, thanks to Google Translate and Translate on screen with Twitter and Facebook, people can see tweets in Welsh and just press the Translate button. So they're not afraid, or people on Facebook uh, just have, you know, the defaults always translate Welsh to English. So even if you are posting something Welsh, people, it's not in the, people are not afraid of it anymore. You are definitely coming out of the closet, the, the whole movement. <laughs> well, th there is a question uh, on, on our YouTube uh, chat. Andres is asking you, uh, let me read the question. Aren't you scared you might achieve the independence and lose your, your language? So that, that's a common question we have here in Catalonia, that the fact that you gain independence doesn't guarantee that the, the language will have, well, in, in better health. Yeah, this is an issue. I, I didn't know it's an issue. It's an issue in Wales, and you know, the, for 100 years almost, it's been look at Ireland. So Ireland has been independent, but they haven't saved the language. And 
Uh, and this is the one reason why Plaid Cymru and the National Movement didn't push independence. So a lot of people in Wales, unlike in Scotland, who maybe pushed independence in 1970s or 60s, in Wales, those people were campaigning for Welsh education, campaigning for Welsh television and radio, and they prioritised the language. Um, my people will have different views of this. I don't think, I don't think it's a problem. Well, it's an issue. I, we will be campaigning to save the Welsh language forever. I think this is our destiny now. I think we are, we are, unfortunately, we are next door to the most powerful language in the world ever. I know that's not going to change. I think with independence, we have a chance of making the Welsh language more normal. We have more control over the policies here. We have more control over everything. And you can then use even more policies to make Welsh more mainstream and normalise it. I think the the Irish experience is not is quite unique. I think you know Ireland achieved independence when the Irish language was weaker than Welsh is now. So they, they achieved it, but by the time I, I became independent in the nineteen twenties, from what I read, the Irish language is a weaker situation than even Welsh is now. So I mean, it was essentially a, an spoken by very, very poor Indians of Ireland. Uh, and also there was, um, there wasn't, if you like, the, the scientific understanding of how to revive a language. So they didn't have West Irish medium schools for 50 years. Uh, they didn't understand how our language revival worked. So in a way, the Irish state wasted 50 years or more where things which are certainly in Basque Country and Catalonia and Wales to lesser extent understand better than the Irish did 1920s, 30s, and also starting from a stronger position, I think. So I, there is a danger, definitely, but I, I, I would still prefer to independence and I would still think that an independent Wales would look after the language better than a non-independent Wales. So, uh, let me read just the, uh, the, the message of Dick Jenkins. Uh, he says, I'm 71. I was educated by uh, the British state and its empire. As an independentist, I was an outlier, but now it's becoming a mainstream political thought. So, yeah, uh, which agrees what, with what you were saying. Uh, well, I have another question to you, Sean. So, do, do you see that uh, that in the future, in the forthcoming years, uh, like there was this devolution process uh, that started in the late 90s in the UK, right? Um, so will it go farther? Will, will, do you think, irrespective of the dependence of Wales or Scotland, uh, do you think that this will happen, that Wales and Scotland, well, let's, let's focus on Wales. The, the, it will gain more, more sovereignty, more, more political sovereignty in the forthcoming years? Uh, considering the, I know that everything is very, I mean, there is the Brexit, there is Boris Johnson ruling the country. So what, what do you think that will happen in the, in the, uh, in the next future? I apologize for my computer. I don't know what's happening. Um, I have no idea, Enrique, what's going to happen. I don't know what's going to happen in six months time. Um, I've believed the day, two days after Brexit, I held a, ref, a rally in Aberystwyth for independence. And you know, about 40 people turned up. So it's just to say, look, we have to do something. And I sort of said then, in 10 years time, or by the end of, by 2030, Wales will either be independent or it will be incorporated into England. So I think devolution has finished devolution is dead. Um, the only thing I think which could save devolution, and I think the only thing which could save the British state, the UK state, is somehow Labour winning an election in the next 18 months. And I can't see how that election would be called. And somehow Labour able to offer something which keeps Scotland in the union, uh, which, is, which is not too much for England. And I can't see how they can square that. So, I mean, if somehow that happens, 
then I think um, you know, the British state will continue and devolution will somehow continue. So I think the movement within the Labour Party in Wales now would be towards having more powers. And I think there's enough people in the Labour Party now saying, look, we, we want to have some kind of more powers over policing and judiciary and stuff. And I think I don't think they would now give up with that. But I just don't think the Labour Party would win in England to implement that because there's no need for an election of four years. And I think within four years, Scotland would have gone. So I think Wales either becomes independent or it becomes part of England. You know, so the Tories are now starting to take powers away from the Welsh and Scottish uh, governments from the Parliament. So they used Brexit, as we always knew, uh, to take powers away from Wales and Scotland. Um, so, so yeah, the evolution is is a dead end. The only I said the only thing which could save devolution is somehow uh, Labour win very soon. Somehow Labour have a constitutional change which includes devolution. But I I can't see Labour winning that election in the next two years, which is what they need to do. So I think by then Scotland will have had a referendum. I think Scotland will vote for independence. I think the British state would try to do the same as the, the Spanish state did with Catalonia, which is not recognize it, pretend it's not happened. But I think that then leads to three, four years of political debate. Maybe then Labour win an election in 2024 in Britain and somehow save it. Um, and maybe then devolution has a bit more life. But at the moment, you know, it is, you know, it's, it's high stakes, you know. We are either going to become England or we're going to be independent. That's how I see it. So I, I have an, another question, John. Uh, so in the book, Independence in Your Pocket of your campaign, uh, let me read what I found it interesting because for us it's interesting to that the fact that the UK doesn't have any constitution and you talk about this in, in the book and in the book you state uh, yeah the UK is one of the few nations of the world that doesn't have its own written constitution instead the UK's constitution is shaped by decisions of English lawmakers and English court judgments sometimes going back generations even centuries um, so this has an effect on the on the ruling of the the country, right? Could you please explain? Uh, I mean, talk about it. Uh, what, what are the consequences of not having a, a, a constitution? And well, um, of course, your movement would like to write the, your own constitution yeah. for Wales. Yeah. So because uh, for yeah, for us it's a bit hard to understand. And how that how that? Yeah, I mean, it's um, well, it's and. Yeah, so there, there is a constitution, but it's not written. So, I mean, essentially in Britain, the constitution is precedent. So what's happened before? So, and this is the problem for the Westminster government with the Scottish referendum. The Scots will say, look, there is a precedent for a Scottish referendum on independence. And this is how the British constitution works. And if this happened before, it cannot happen. There's no reason not to happen again. And that's a very, very strong constitutional base because that's how the British constitution works. So if it's happened before, then it can happen again. So unless they change it. What the Tories may do, <clears throat> and some un strong unionists and Labour Party, is to actually bring in a constitution or bring in something like you know, a British Bill of Rights or a British constitution, which will effectively maybe try to do what you have in Spain, which is your know, to break up the in, unity of the UK is unconstitutional, or it needs to have a vote from all parts of the UK. I think that I, I don't know, I would wouldn't surprise me the Tories try to bring something like that in, um, and that's why, in a way, if the Scots are going to have a referendum, they need to have it quick um, before something like that can be implemented. So in the UK, if it's happened before then it can happen again. Obviously, some things happen for the first time, but in a way, it's, um, yeah, the theory is if it's not written down, it's not unconstitutional. So, uh, which is different in, in France, what, what people in Britain see, you know, the French constitution or French legal mind is, it has to be written down to be legal. In the UK, it doesn't have to, if it, if it's not written down, it's not illegal. So if it's not, if there is a if there isn't a law 
against succession, secession, then secession or independence is not illegal. Um, so we're in the process of writing our own constitution for Wales, just to have the discussion. Uh, that'll be coming out in a few months' time, hopefully. Um, and this is actually the, the the two main objectives of Yes Cymru is one to have a Welsh independent constitution, and second to have um, a seat in the United Nations. So, you know, so anything else, you know, if it's in NATO or the Euro or European Union, we, we just don't decide on that. But it's it's going to be interesting. I I, I think the Scots will need to hold a referendum fairly quickly, I think, before the British state uh, make it illegal. Uh, and I would also like to, I don't know if Bekochu and Laura have more questions. I, I can be, well, one of the last questions. Uh, of, I just have to ask about the, the monarchy. Uh, well, how, how will you deal with it uh, in uh, independent Wales? I, I know it's very open. How, how, yeah. how, how would you deal with it? Yeah. Yeah, I think in the, in the independence in your pocket book, which is actually for free on the website as well, um, we don't we don't take a decision on monarchy. You know, is Wales going to be a republic? We don't. That's that's for another referendum. So we try to keep. I think most of supporters are Republicans, um, or they don't have any big affinity with the monarchy. Uh, we have the title in Wales of the Prince of Wales, which is like the Prince of Asturias in Spain. Uh, so this is used to try and say, oh, look, little Welsh people, the royal family love you. When we think about you, you have a Prince of Wales. I know it's, it's a nonsense, it's an absolute joke. Uh, the, the title of the Prince of Wales was founded in 1284. So Wales, the last Prince of Wales was killed in, 18, in 1282. And Edward I, the King of England, uh, went to Wales, went to Carnarvon Castle and said, you know, I will give you a prince who doesn't speak any English, and he would be your new prince. And he gave the Welsh a baby, which doesn't speak any language at all. So this is where the, the title of the Prince of Wales started. So it's a nonsense. But yes, come here as a movement. We we don't take a line. That's it's just not worth. It's not important. They have no big power. I mean, they have a lot of like in Spain. They have um, you know moral power, if you like. But it's it's an argument. It's not worth getting into. It's for another day. If there are no more questions, Begochi and Laura, perhaps we could leave it here. Uh, yeah, Begochi. Uh, no, uh, it's fine. I mean, we, we could, I could say for yeah, hours could. and hours talking about all this, but it's fine. <laughs> it's fine. Yeah, well, so thank you very much, John, for this interesting conversation. It's been a, a great pleasure. Uh, well, we'll keep an eye on the Yes Camry campaign because we believe that there is a strong future to, well, for you. Uh, and you have a lot of work <laughs> to be done in the forthcoming future. Um, thank you very much, Begochu and Laura from ANC uh, Euskadi, uh, well, Scaleria. Uh, Scaleria or Euskadi, is it? Euskaleria. Euskaleria, um, Basque Country. Um, and Laura Crispy from uh, ANC Scotland. Uh, oh, sorry? No, no. Go ahead. Okay. <laughs> well, um, just, just keep an eye on our social media uh, for the forthcoming events that we'll be organizing. Uh, I would like to wish everyone that to please take lots of care. The pandemic is in a, in a very bad situation now in, in the UK in general and in the rest of Europe, of course, in Catalonia as well. Uh, well, thank you very much to, to the audience for listening and watching us. Um, and we look forward to seeing you all very soon. Thank you very much. Escari Casco, Nostra. Thank you. Gracias. Gracias. <laughs> thank you for the invitation. How do you say thank you in, in Welsh? Uh, Dioch. And Dioch. then good night is Nos da. Nosta. Okay. Nosta. 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 Nosta.